Something exciting arrived in the mail. I'm not even vlogging today. I might vlog tomorrow, but I wanted to include this video clip because for me, it is exciting. Pause. I did in fact lie. This has become the start of a new vlog. So welcome to today's vlog. Enjoy. So this is the package that I got. It's from Ikea. It's really skinny because there's just a teeny tiny thing in here. So if you didn't already know, my mom got this bookcase for free on Facebook Marketplace or like this Facebook group that she's in. The only issue is that it's missing two of the shelf supporting pins, whatever. And so I- Yes, I got it! I checked if I could get it on Ikea and they were happy to send it out for free, so now we've got it. This looks odd. This does not look like the ones I have on the shelf, but they said this one is for the Billy bookcase. Also, I asked for four and I only got three. Like, why are we being stingy, babes? Unless I lost it? No, there's only three. That's weird. I realize I have to take everything off so I can actually get this shelf sorted out. So, should we rearrange my shelves today? Like, is that the day to do it? Also, I'm sorry for the motorcycle you can hear outside. I don't know if you saw that, but the shelves are unstable. Like my mental health. Kidding. Also, I did find the other one. There are four pins. One, two, three, four. The other one just escaped. See how wobbly that is? It's because it's missing a support pin here. Take this off. The dogs are barking downstairs. Why? Why must it be so chaotic? Oh no, it is the same thing. I don't realize that they look like this. This is the original. And this is what they sent us. They're literally, they look the same, but the original ones are like girthier. Does that make sense? Probably does not. Get in there. Okay. Hey, hey, look at that. Look at that. I can do this. I can do it. Wait. Now it's sturdy. I have two spare pins. Okay, before we get into the organizing bit and bookshelf tour, I've got work today, so we'll do the bookish stuff later. In the meantime, I'm gonna vlog. And right now, I'm gonna eat lunch. And you guys, I have my struggle meal going. I'll show you. Well, don't get me wrong. We are not broke. We are not starving. The freezer is full of food. But I am too lazy to cook. So we're gonna go with a struggle meal today, which is literally heating up leftover fried rice. Let's put that on the plate now. Why don't we? And then I've got some chicharron and a carrot stick. To be fair, it's it's a bit balanced because you've got your carbs, I've got my rice, and it's got veggies, it's got protein in there, like the fried rice has egg and bacon bits, and I've got the chicharron. As you can see, I'm all dressed for work. And can we take a moment to appreciate this shot, like the circle mirror, the lighting. I love taking pictures and videos like this. I do have to clean my mirror though. Anyway, I'm going to head to work and I will do the rest of the bookish stuff either when I get home or tomorrow because I've got the day off. It all just kind of depends on how I'm feeling after work today. I will see you later. It'll be about two seconds for you, but it'll be hours for me. Hello, it is the next day. So clearly I haven't got into the bookish stuff last night, but we're gonna do it today. Please ignore my puffy face and like my weird voice if you can hear it. I'm... I wouldn't say sick, but the hay fever is hay fevering tonight, today. So please excuse that. I know it's also a little bit late, but I want to do a January reading wrap up as well as show you the books that I do plan on unholing, um, just for the fun of it. Before we get into the bookish stuff, I just want to have a little talk regarding the content that I'm going to be putting out. If I'm being honest, I made a video similar to this a few days ago and I, I finished editing it and everything. But as I was watching it back, I was really dissatisfied with what I was gonna put out so I ended up scrapping it. So I guess I'm just doing this little PSA section in this video to kind of set expectations for others but also reassure myself that I'm making content mostly for my own entertainment because I'm a yapper and I'm also a nostalgic person. I want to be able to look back on these videos and see like what I was reading before and how my bookshelf looked like before and how that's gonna change 
throughout time when we move houses like as I grow as a person what that means is I will not have a sophisticated setup I'm literally filming on my iPhone 11 right now and I've got a stool and my water bottle to put my phone up against I do not have any microphone or any fancy equipment and as for editing like I've disclosed in my TikTok video no editing skills, no intros, no outros, no fancy this or that. It's just me yapping about my favorite things. <laughs> and I felt really insecure about that and was doubting myself because I was like, oh, if I, if I do gain subscribers, if anyone was to watch my videos, they'd just find me annoying. But the truth is I was just watching some of my favorite YouTubers. So Destiny Sidster, Sarah Crowley and Steph Borer, they're all bookish girlies, they're all on booktube and they do make serious videos but I also really love watching their vlogs, especially like Destiny, she just yaps. Steph, Steph's vlogmas, she just yap, no editing skills and I really enjoy that. I have, I love having those videos in the background when I'm at home and I'm doing my chores and whatnot because you know, TikTok's ruined my attention span and I, I cannot live normally without being stimulated 24 7. that's the thing i'm working on we're not going to talk about it right now i guess the vibe that i'm going for with my videos is that it's like you're on facetime with your best friend and you know sometimes i say funny stuff and sometimes it's boring but it is just the way it is i don't have the time or resources to do more maybe that'll change in the future maybe i'll get fancier equipment like a proper vlogging camera but for the foreseeable future that's this is this what you see is what you get so with that being said let's get into my reading wrap up for january 2024 and i want to show you the books i am unholing as well for january 2024 i only read two books and that's another thing about me is that i am a slow reader so you're not gonna get 10 to 20 book reviews a month from me there are many other booktubers who are able to do that unfortunately that's not me i'm just pause Hay fever is really bad. I need to take a pill. Hopefully by the end of the video, the hay fever has gotten better. So the first book- um, Hello! Hi! So the first book that I read this year is Heartstopper Volume 5 by Alice Oseman. I went into reading this quite blindly because I forgot all about what happened in Volume 4 since I read it, what, two years ago now? Luckily, it wasn't too hard to catch up with what's happening. So this book focuses on three kind of storylines the first is being of nick trying to figure out what he wants to pursue in uni what kind of career he wants to get into unfortunately he is having trouble figuring that out and it's really a stressful time for him because his friends have an idea of what they want to do they're asking questions they're having discussions nick is overwhelmed he has all these feelings about the situation and on top of that he's trying to consider how to make his relationship with charlie work while he's in uni and charlie's still in secondary school or high school or whatever it's called in the uk i'm sorry i forgot as for charlie he is still working on his own recovery and that includes dealing with body image and intimacy issues healing his relationship with family members and stepping out of his comfort zone which was also very interesting to see lastly there is that overarching storyline between nick and charlie where they try and exploring their intimate sexual relationship for the first time and i think it discusses that topic in a way that is really tasteful because it still takes into consideration that the target audience of this graphic novel series is or are teenagers and young adults. I hope nobody is expecting any raunchy, spicy, explicit scenes in a series like Heartstopper because I know it's been a problem in the last year or so on Book Talk where people expect or are asking for spice in YA books, which shocks me and I wholly disagree with. But wrapping my review up on this, I rated this a four stars. Was it life changing? No, but was it really good? Yes. I know that the Heartstopper series is such an important series for a lot of young people. I wish, I'm 22 now, and I wish I had something like this when I was younger because it really touches on important and relatable topics in a way that makes you feel seen and understood. Moving on to the second book I read this year, I've got Melt With You by Jennifer Dugan, and I rated this two stars. I so wanted to love this book. I really so wanted to love this book. It is YA, it is sapphic. The vibes, the cover, look at it, it's so cute, but I was disappointed. Just a quick summary on what this book is about. We have Fallon, who is very type A, 
plans everything she does, meticulously thinks everything through, structure organized kind of person. Then we have Chloe, who is more happy-go-lucky, spontaneous, goes with the flow, nonchalant. These two girls are best friends since they were children, but in the previous summer, they hooked up. There was a misunderstanding about that and they haven't talked for a year. Now we're back to present time, the following summer, and we see this book from Fallon's perspective, so she's avoiding Chloe, which proves to be difficult because both their moms own an ice cream truck kind of business together. Then the situation kind of gets worse when, and I'm gonna read off the back of the book, when a meeting with some promising potential investors call their parents away at the last minute, it's up to Fallon to work a series of important food truck festivals across the country, but she can't do it alone and Chloe is the only one available to help. Tensions heat up between the two girls as they face a few unexpected detours, da 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 da. So with that premise alone, you can kind of already see the tropes that are going to be used and I also saw that coming but I just wanted to give this book the benefit of the doubt I really wanted to like it so I went ahead and read it anyway even though I'm not a fan of those tropes that I was expecting to see in this book and look I was expecting the tropes but I wasn't expecting them to use the tropes throughout the entire book to the point where it was just frustrating the two main characters were very much acting like teenagers which good for them but it was frustrating for me as a reader and the plot just didn't plot like I wanted it to on top of that I didn't really root for the two main characters and that's a big thing for me when reading rom-coms or just romances in general like if you can't even root for the the main couple or the two main characters like what is it all for so luckily i made it through to the end the writing style was not bad it was okay it was good but nothing memorable either i don't necessarily recommend this book take from that what you will um i don't hate it either i was just disappointed these are the two books that i read in january four stars two stars and my current read, just for the sake of sharing, is Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. I am currently, what, 63, 60 something percent of the way through. I'm also reading it on my Kindle, so that's why I know where my progress is at. And I'm currently loving it, but I will do a more detailed review in my following month's wrap up for February. As for the books that I'm unholing, I've got three, and I'm not going to get into too much detail as to why I am unholing each and every one but generally i just don't feel drawn to these books and i don't think i'm gonna read them anytime soon so instead of having them take up space on my shelf i'll just give them away to people other people who might enjoy them so firstly i've got david yoon's frankly in love next i've got if this gets out by sophie gonzalez and kale dietrich or dietrich and ali hazelwood's love on the brain I have a friend picking this up and I have a friend who wants this one. This one I will put in my little free library near our house. So that is my January reading wrap up and the books that I'm unholing. So should we get to me reorganizing my bookshelf? We shall. All right, so that is what the bookcase currently looks like. Ta-da! I actually don't have a problem with where the books are placed. My issue plants my issue more so is with where the trinkets are placed i have a lot of trinkets and thingamabobs and knickknacks and i love them and i want to display them but the issue is that they're placed in front of the books currently and i can't get the books out without having to move like five different things to get to them i'm gonna try and find places for the thingamabobs so that i can still de blah, blah, blah. So, what? So what I was trying to say is, I'm gonna move my thingy-mabobs, knickknacks, trinkets, whatever you want to call them, around in a way that I can still display them, but not have them interfere with me trying to get to my books. Does that make sense? It makes sense in my head. I hope it makes sense as I'm saying it out loud. Anyway, I'm also gonna put on a movie or a YouTube video or play some music, so you might get a time lapse of me trying to sort this out. I know the mirror is dirty, so please ignore it, but I've taken down all my trinkets. I'm watching Des, by the way. Um, yeah, these are all my trinkets, and now I've just got the books on here for the most part, except for that last shelf that's going to be my trinket shelf, but I don't know which ones I'm going to put up there, so let's figure it out, shall we? Hello, I am back from lunch, and um, I'm a little bit overwhelmed with the location of all my knickknacks. They're all over my room. I've taken a good deal of them 
off of my bookcase to tidy it up but now they've gotten replaced and i've got to find a place for them either in my room somewhere else in the house or in the bin and as a sentimental person it's really hard for me to get rid of things so this will prove to be a challenge for me in the meantime i will go through with the bookcase slash bookshelf tour all right from now on i'll be filming like this with the back camera so we're gonna start at the very top i need to use a step stool so I just Ta -da! okay so this is my knickknacks shelf starting on the left at the very back we've got my pop collection it's not very big but these are my favorite characters so i've got number five and klaus from the umbrella academy i think these are from season one and then i've got stranger things i've got robin in her scoops ahoy uniform and i've also got 11 this is my first ever pop um and these are both from season three i believe and lastly i've got flynn rider and oh something's blocking it ah i've got rapunzel um because tangled is my favorite like disney princess movie and this one is special edition i think this is from like one of my very close friends aubrey um so thanks orbs <laughs> Zooming out, we've got two ceramic dogs that were gifted to me. I've got this music box that I got from New York. Then I've got the two snow globes in my collection. I've got this one from New York. And this one is from my uni. It doesn't really snow where I am in Australia, so the purple thingies are supposed to represent jacaranda or jacaranda flowers. And in the back, I've got a little jar of dice here. I've got this little Groot planter, and it's got mini brands books in there and like some pins look it's my catching fire pin i used to have a really bad not bad but a really intense hunger games phase when i was like 13 and this survived from it anyway in the back is my pin collection i could go into more detail about this next time and then i've got my music box here and here i have my friendship bracelets relating to Noah Khan and his postcard set that I got from the merch truck when I went to his concert. Lastly, I've got my little collection of mushrooms. I love mushrooms. Um, and my sister painted this one and these were all gifted to me. Moving on to the shelf below that, on the second shelf, on the rightmost side, I've got my Archie collection. And then this one I got from Ikea, but behind it are all my fantasy books that I have yet to read, except for Serpent and Dove. And then we pan over to the leftmost side, which takes up half of the shelf actually, is my Rick Riordan books. I've got Heroes of Olympus, Percy Jackson, and these two spin-offs. I've got Percy Jackson and the Greek Gods, and Percy Jackson and the Greek Heroes. I've got this art, it is of Annabeth and Percy. It says, as long as we're together, look how cute that is. I've got shelves because Son of Poseidon, Mr. Percy Jackson. And we've got a guinea pig because Sea of Monsters, Percy Jackson, if you know, you know. Panning down to the third shelf, we've got the Heartstopper graphic novel series, as well as Alice Oseman's other books. And I've also included two pride pins for the fun of it. Moving on, we've got Anna Huang's Twisted series. And then to its right, we've got Lauren Asher's books particularly the Dreamland Billionaire series, as well as the first book in the Dirty Air series, I believe. It's called Throttled. And lastly, we've got the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. And I've also left these two kind of Lego flowers on here because they're not hard to move since there's only two of them if I need to. Thank you, Ali, for these, by the way. Ali's my best friend. So if you're watching Ali, thanks. They're cute. Continuing with the zigzag pattern that I'm using for this bookshelf tour, the fourth shelf is my standalone shelf. Majority of these are standalones, but there are a few such as the one, things we never got over, and the inheritance games that are parts of series, but I've only got the one book, so they're going to stay on this shelf. And I'm not going to go through each single one, so just have a look right now. And as for the decorations, I've only got this one plaque that has my name on it, and then my little cup of bookmarks. I keep to the very end. Down to the fifth shelf, we're almost done. And to the very left, we've got my collection of the Little Prince books. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six books at the moment up oh, in my collection. And we have this little plaque that I also got from Ikea, and this little random stuffed dog. 
And to provide context, the reason why I have so many copies of The Little Prince is because I buy a copy from each city that I visit. So far, I've got New York, Manila, Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide. I know majority of them are in Australia, but it's whatever. And then I've also got one from Paris because my mom visited Europe last summer. She went to a few countries. One of them was Paris, France, and so she got me a copy in French as well. As I was saying, I have this plaque from Ikea and behind it, I've got a bunch Oh, okay. Uh, we've got a bunch of things such as tarot cards, um, zines, um, this little book safe that my friend gave me for a birthday a few years ago, and then little bookish trinkets such as my book stamp is in this little tin can right here. My battery is about to run out, so let's do this quickly. I've got a fake plan from Ikea as well. Um, poetry books i've got some classics here um and then my hardbound books i've got one two three four five and then i've got some activity books such as word search sudoku and the heartstopper coloring book that aubrey gave me a few years ago for my birthday and down to the very last shelf i've got my vinyl records here i can do a tour of that next time and then a bunch of random stuff here so i've got a book sleeve here and a kindle sleeve here and these are some more trinkets that i don't care to go through right now to the left of those in the back i've got some vinyl sleeves and to the front, I've got my briefcase vinyl player, which I need to upgrade from because I heard that these can damage vinyl records. My phone is at 10%, so I need to wrap this up really quickly. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you've made it to the end. I've put my social media down in the description, so check those out if you are interested. But other than that, I'll see you in the next one. See ya!